Hello everyone, it's Ashley and today I have finally filmed another book haul. I'm really excited, not even going to give an introduction to this because I know the book haul already is going to be way too long, so let's just, let's get started. So to start off this book haul, I have three books that I'm very, very excited for and I've already filmed book talks for, and that is the Raven Cycle books. I have the first three in the series. The books that I had been reading for my book talks were actually my sister's books, and so I ordered these for myself. The reason why I don't have the Raven King is because I'm actually going to go to Maggie Steve Otter's book signing in Orlando on June 9th, and to get a book signed, I have to buy a book there, and so I'm just gonna get the Raven King there, that way she can sign all of my books, and I'm super, super excited about it. In case you guys didn't know, The Raven Cycle is my newest obsession, and it is kind of like a paranormal urban fantasy. The Raven Cycle is about these four boys who go to Aglion B Academy, which is an all-boys, very expensive school, and one boy, Gansey, is searching for this dead Welsh king, and then there's Blue Sergeant, who is the female protagonist, and she is part of a psychic family, but she is the only non-psychic in that family. But she can make the supernatural and the psychic power kind of thing stronger. She's like a battery, basically. And it's about them coming together, trying to find Glendower, this dead Welsh king, and it's just a lot of fun. And I'm just so happy that I finally have my own copy. So the next book that I have on my list is Ready Player One by Ernest Cline. I've heard so much about this book, and I've wanted to get it for a really long time now because I just know that it's a really, really, really good book. And I've also heard that the audiobook is really good, so maybe I'll try to get into audiobooks by doing that. I don't know. I think it's kind of about the future in 2044, and the world is a really, like, ugly, horrible place. And there's this virtual reality called Oasis, I think, and the creator has like this prize if somebody follows all the clues and wins, and this kid, Wade, starts doing that, and it's something about that, but I know that it's supposed to be really, really good, and I'm super excited to get into it. So if you've watched my bookshelf tour, you probably know what this next book is. When I was showing off my paperback copies of the Cassandra Clare books, I mentioned that I was probably going to get one of them to complete my collection, and I did, and so I grabbed Clockwork Princess by Cassandra Clare on Book Outlet, and that's why it has like the little dot on the top. I'm super, super happy that I finally got this, because now that means that I can read the entire Infernal Devices paperback and not have to even touch my hard copies that I have, which I hold so near and dear to my heart. Oh my god, I love them so much. And this series is probably like my favorite trilogy of all time. I really, really need to reread it because I love it so much. I'm not going to really give anything away for this book because it's the third and the last book in the Infernal Devices trilogy, but if you haven't yet picked up anything by Cassandra Clare, do it now! What if you've been waiting for, do it. You will not regret it. So to continue on with the Shadowhunter theme I have going right now, I have a history of notable shadow hunters and Dendians of Downworld told in the language of flowers by Cassandra Clare and illustrated by Cassandra Jean. Do I have a story to go along with this book? Okay, so ever since I saw that this was actually a thing, I've been trying to find it everywhere. And so finally I went to that website to Patico and I literally had the website saved in my notes on my phone forever waiting to buy it. It's $20. Like it's not it's not that cheap for a tiny book. Finally, I decided I was just going to do it. I was just going to spend the money. I was going to do it. I was going to get it and I'm not going to regret it. So I go onto the website and I put it in my cart and then I go to check out and I don't realize before I check out. I go and get find the receipt for the payment and it turns out Shipping was six dollars. So in reality, this little teeny tiny little book full of pictures cost me thirty dollars. Do I have any regrets? Hell no, because this book is gorgeous. I had not expected this book to be this beautiful. It's like such a great quality hardcover on the outside and the words shine in the light. Okay, like that's two pluses. And then, oh my God, the pictures in it. Like, I just, I, I can't even with the pictures, guys. Like, what? Like, but seriously, these pictures are gorgeous. And I just am so happy I have this to add to my Shadowhunter collection. I'm just, oh my God, $30 or not, it's a keeper. And to finish up with my Shadow Hunter theme that I have going right now, you guys are probably going to think I'm crazy bringing these 
books up here because actually you already have almost two copies of the mortal instruments why do you need another my answer to that is why don't i need another i have <laughs> the uk special edition like reprint copies of the books and they are so gorgeous there are only five of them i don't yet have city of heavenly fire i got all of these from book depository because it was free shipping and i didn't have to pay for shipping for all the way from the uk and when they finally got city of heavenly fire back in stock they sold out before i had the chance to get it so now i just have to wait for it again or pay for shipping which is probably what i'll do because you know it's worth it so the illustrator who designs the covers of these books is actually the same artist that created the design on the front of Coldplay's Ghost Stories album. I love that album art, and so when I heard that and I saw these books, I was like, I need them. I need them right now. And now that I have these, all I really need are the other like new reprinted copies of the US version of the Mortal Instruments and the Inferno Devices, and then I'll have all of the English copies ever oh my god i'm just so excited to have these in my collection and i need city of heavenly fire like now i need to complete this thing like now so the next book that i have came out i think a month ago in early may and i've heard so much about it and that is the unexpected everything by morgan matson i am super excited to get into this it just adds to my already very limited contemporary collection and it's huge it's a really big book so there's a lot going on in this this will be my first book ever that i've ever owned or have read by Morgan Matson, so I'm really excited to jump into a new author that I know nothing about and I'll just I want to see how it goes. This book I think is about Andy who has her summer basically planned, everything is set out, everything is planned, um, she knows exactly what she's doing and then I think she meets this boy named Clark and everything just goes downhill from there. Um, that's about all I got for this book but I'm really excited to jump into it. So the next book that I have is one that I have heard a lot about recently, like a lot. That is A Court of Thorns and Roses by Sarah J. Mass. This series, I have heard so much about this series, especially ever since A Court of Mist and Fury came out. It's just been everywhere and I want to know what all of the hype is about. I want to know what this series is about. I have people all the time telling me that I need to read this book or I need to read the Throne of Glass series and I just need to know what all this hype about Sarah J Maas's books are about because like I want to be Sarah J Maas right now. I want to write books that have this much hype surrounding them. So I'm really, really super pumped to get into this series just because I've heard so much about it and I need to know what it's about now. I know absolutely nothing about it other than that it's a high fantasy and it's a Beauty and the Beast retelling. And so I'm really excited to jump into it pretty much blind. So the next book that I have is one that you guys are probably going to be thinking, Ashley, why do you need that? Why did you buy that? What is wrong with you? And that is Queen of Shadows by Sarah J. Mass. Why did I need to buy this book when I only have the first book in the series? Well, let me answer that question for you with a simple one word, book outlet. This book on book outlet was $5, $5. Originally, this book is like 18, $25, I don't even know. It's the hardcover, first of all, and it's a big ass book. So $5, I'm not going to pass that up. And this motivates me even more to get the second and third book and the little collection of novellas in preparation for the new book, Empire of Storms, that's coming out. Next up is another book you guys are probably going to be wondering, Ashley, why the heck did you need to buy that? And that is Ruin and Rising by Lee Bardugo the exclusive collector's edition. And yet again, my answer to that is book outlet. This book was $3.99. Like, let me, let me just, let me say that one more time. This book was $3.99. Oh, why was I not going to buy this? Do I have the first two books? No. Am I going to eventually read them? Of course. When am I gonna get them? Hell if I know, but $3.99, how can you pass this up? The only thing I know about this series at all is that there is someone named the Darkling that is literally it. Like, literally. 
And so the last book that I wanted to mention before I got into any of the book merchandise that I bought over the course of the month is my first ever graphic novel that I've ever thought about buying ever. And that is Nimona by Noelle Stevenson. I have always loved the idea of a comic book. I always thought that they were so appealing and just like the Marvel universe especially, like I really wanted to always get into that in the comic book world rather than just watch the movies. But for some reason, the term graphic novel like completely turns me off of wanting to buy any of these things whatsoever and I don't know why. There is nothing about the words graphic novel that is intimidating or like putting off whatsoever so I don't know what has been the deal with me and finally buying a graphic novel but I'm really glad that I finally did especially because this one is so beautiful. Now I'm not gonna lie this book was such a cover buy for me like as soon as I saw the cover I was like I'm buying that book. I am buying that graphic novel. It is going to be my first graphic novel and I will like it. And so I'm really, really excited to get into this because I love the artwork. I love being able to open it up and seeing that there's like pictures and words and it looks so cute. I'm so excited. Oh my God. Finally, to wrap this video up, I'm gonna show off a little bit of the bookish merchandise that I bought throughout the month. So I went on to Redbubble and I ended up buying like four or five different stickers that are about the Raven Cycle. I gave like two or three of them to my sister and I kept a couple. The first one that I kept was a um, 300 Foxway Psychic Services sticker. I think this is such an adorable sticker and seriously, if there was ever a TV or movie adaptation to this book, this needs to be the symbol for their psychic business because it is so pretty. I would go visit the psychic business if this was the logo. Like, I would. So the next sticker that I got is one of my favorite quotes from the Raven Cycle ever, and that's the one where Blue says, is this safe? And Gansy says, safe as life. And I love it so much because obviously Gansy's life is not safe whatsoever. I mean, his life is in danger the entire four books of the series. But I love this because it's so cute and it's small enough to fit on a sticker and not look like overwhelming that you have to actually like look into it to read it. You can read this from a pretty good distance away. And plus it even has like the little ley line symbol underneath it and it's so adorable and I love it so much. And then the last piece of Raven Cycle merchandise that I got is something that I've seen around on booktube for a while. This past month I've noticed that these like bigger booktubers have these license plates that say like caves water on them from the actual series and I really wanted to get my hands on one of those and when I realized that you couldn't buy them anywhere I decided to just kind of make my own I guess and so I went onto this license plate website and I made my own and this is what it looks like. I am so happy that I made this even though it doesn't really look exactly like the other license plates that other people have do. I'm really really happy that I have it. <laughs> I'm a little crazy. You can probably tell. And then the last piece of bookish merchandise that I've gotten is actually from the Infernal Devices. I can't believe I bought this. This is really expensive too. I'm really excited that I got it though. And that is this shirt right here. It looks like one of those old Nike shirts that people used to wear. If any of you have read the Infernal Devices, you'll understand this. Like, you'll get it. There's no more to be said. Okay guys, so that's gonna be it for my book haul, and I can pretty much guarantee that the next book haul that I'll have will probably have more books than this one did. And this one had a lot of books. Also before I go, I just wanted to say thank you so much for 300 subscribers. Literally, I thanked you guys in the last video that I posted for 200 subscribers, and I can't believe I'm already at 300. This is insane, and I'm so, so grateful and thankful to every single one of you who have even taken the time to click on a video. So thank you so, 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 much. If you like this video, give it a big thumbs up and subscribe to my channel if you want to be notified of when I upload new videos. Thank you so much for watching, guys, and I'll catch you next time. Bye!